Welcome to part two of how to study. And as I showed you in part one, the majority of this material is from Dartmouth College. This is the website where you can find videos of these subjects and other information. In part two, we'll talk about active study. And we'll talk about motivation. We'll look at how your memory works. We'll discuss how to study for the sciences. And last, we'll look at studying for skills. Learning takes time. Very few people have photographic memories. Learning requires repetition, meaningful repetition. This is why active study techniques are so vitally important. The recording disk of the brain accepts new material much faster if it hears, sees, feels, tastes, and detects motion during input or recording time. Then, too, the more times around the learning circuit, the longer lasting the impression. If you're able to place abstract ideas into diagrammatic form, you will remember the concept. Material that is difficult to master can be organized by finding keywords in each point, noting the first letter and arranging the letters into a sense or nonsense word. The sillier the better. These are called mnemonics. For example, what are the colors of the color spectrum? You could remember the name Roy G. Biv, where the letters of the colors correspond to that name. You have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. In the EMS world, we use many mnemonics. How do we gather a general past medical history? We use the mnemonic sample, S-A-M-P-L-E. S stands for signs and symptoms, A for allergies, M for medications, P for pertinent past medical history, L for last oral intake, and E for events leading up to the problem. You could also devise a mnemonic based on key words. The first example I showed you represents the type of mnemonic a student could use to learn a short list of items for an objective test. The second example shows you how you will learn to perform the steps of taking a past medical history from the patient. If you need to memorize a long list of items such as states in the union, alphabetize and learn in small chunks. You can always depend on the alphabet. Break down a list, rearrange, put on a study card, and master. In the example of learning the states of the union, it's easier to remember that there are four states whose name begins with A, no Bs, 1D, etc., than to try to memorize the list. Study cards. In printing study cards, the student is using kinetic energy or energy in motion, thus making the impression stronger on the brain and the student will be able to use the cards for overlearning. Another reason for having students make study cards is that they are convenient to carry and flip through for mastery. Reading the cards silently, however, is too passive. Go over the cards orally. You will not master the cards by passively reading them. Learning requires the expenditure of energy. The student must be actively engaged in producing the sounds using muscles and burning energy to make the sound. Here are some general points to consider regarding your memory. The student must focus his or her attention on whatever needs to be remembered. If you intend to remember something, you probably will. The student must be sold on the course. Why is this subject worth knowing? Correlative reading may enhance the student's interest. For example, historical novels are a marvelous way to learn history. The greater the knowledge, the greater the interest. Help from other students, classify and associate. Many authorities feel that you will master information faster if you learn in groups of seven or fewer at a time. Have the students overlearn through repetition. Association is a great way to learn, and it's key to memory. You'll remember 10% of what you read. You'll remember 20% of what you hear. 30% of what you see, and you'll remember 50% of what you hear and see together. 
70% of what you say if you think as you're saying it. 90% of what you do. Motivation has a strong influence on how well you do your job. Students often develop a slave mentality. That is, they see themselves performing tasks which are required by their teachers, but which are utterly meaningless to them. In contrast, the students who see how their schoolwork fits into their plans for themselves become willing workers. It is quite true that you can do anything you want to do, because wanting makes the necessary work easy. Determination to work does not mean the same as motivation. Willpower will not work over a lengthy period of time. You can force yourself on occasion, but there are definite limits to the success of such an approach. Next, we'll look at how to gain motivation. Decide what you're trying to do in your course. Find out exactly how to go about achieving what you want, what classes are required, equally important what classes aren't required. How long will it take you? How much will it cost? With this information, you can see the end of the tunnel. You can see yourself progressing and you can avoid a lot of wheel spinning. Make your course a priority. Many of you will have a family and a full-time job to support your family. If your reason for taking this course is not for a profession, at least make it a priority and decide where this course falls in your priority list. If you're taking this course to hopefully have a profession, then make it your job. Don't let your social life or unnecessary work get in your way. If something must be neglected, and good planning can usually avoid this, then neglect something other than this course. Real students own their own textbooks. Have a suitable place to work and keep their materials conveniently available. Most distractions come from within you. If you have trouble concentrating, try to see what's bothering you and take steps to eliminate it. Most problems yield to direct action, but you must do the acting. Set short-range goals. Analyze your study task. What do you want to achieve? How can it best be done? Set a definite time limit. When you get as much done in one hour as six, if you know you must. Work expands to fit the time available. Evaluate your success or failure. You can learn best from making mistakes provided you recognize that they are mistakes. So now let's look at why we forget things. Sometimes we have a negative self-concept. We think of ourselves forgetting things. Or we have not learned the material well. If something is to be retained, it must be correctly and clearly and forcibly impressed on the mind. We must give it the necessary attention and interest. Self-questioning and spaced or periodic reviews are essential. Memories will fade away rapidly when not reviewed or used. The curve of forgetting is like a playground slide. We forget most immediately after we learn in the first 24 hours. Then it proceeds slowly. Motor learning seems to be better retained than verbal learning because a motor act has to be completely done to be done at all and so requires a higher degree of organization and competency which involves overlearning. Interference. Forgetting was formerly thought to mainly result in disuse, but now it is believed that disuse may be a less important factor than interference due to emotional problems, anxieties, distractions, intense concentration on something else, and intellectual interference. Intellectual interference or mental overcrowding can be minimized if we reflect on our reading and experiences, understand them, clarify them, associate, synthesize, and organize them so they will not interfere with each other. Above all, we must avoid pushing, cramming, and overcrowding our learning hours when unorga with unorganized material. Forgetting can be caused by later learning as well. There is more interference between two similar subjects than between two unlike subjects. For example, follow study of history with chemistry rather than English history or literature. So now here's your prescription for success in studying for the sciences. Knowing how to approach the material is the first step in succeeding. The amount of material covered and the speed at which it is covered may seem overwhelming, but if you follow these guidelines, your stress level will decline as your success increases. There are three elements to succeeding in a science course, lecture, time management, and test preparation. 
First, we'll talk about lecture. Prepare for lectures. Read over the lecture outline before class. This will help you focus. Skim the reading that corresponds to the lecture outline. Next, attend every lecture. Everything you need to know will be covered in the lectures. Go to lectures awake and alert. Write down everything you can. Anything is fair game. If you miss a lecture, get notes from at least two people. Find a note buddy. Photocopy and swap your notes with someone after class every day. Meet once a week and teach each other the notes. Time management. Start early. Use the first two weeks of the term or semester. Don't start snowballing. Start studying for your next exam two days after your first one. Set deadlines. Make a term calendar or semester calendar. Set new deadlines. Have all your studying done two days prior to the exam. This gives you two days to review. Find your bio hour. Spend an hour a day reviewing your notes. Make it part of your daily routine. Find the time of the day that you do this best. Three 20 minute sessions throughout the day or 40 minutes reviewing notes and 20 minutes preparing for lectures. For test preparation, condense the material. Make flashcards over your notes. Write out answers to your cards. Reading should be supplementary. Use the reading to supplement all concepts covered in class. Know all the figures that relate to the lecture. Apply the material. As you study, think of applications of the material. Use your textbook publisher's learning management system for learning exercises. Now let's look at studying for skills. While you're in class, you'll be using specific skill sheets for practicing skills. You eventually need to memorize these skill sheets, and you'll have plenty of practice to do that. The skill sheets are concepts that you will need to be able to apply to a variety of patients in a wide range of situations. Consider getting together outside of class time with a group of people to study on these skills. So we've reached the conclusion of the presentation. Contact us if you need help studying. Our goal is for you to be successful. See you in class.